All right, so today I've done something, and I don't know if it's a good idea or not. Normally when we do blinds, like a five-way blind is like kind of the most I like to do, you know, five five different bottles, you know, an ounce, ounce and a half of each. It's a good limit. Well, today I started setting up the blind, figuring out what bottles I wanted to do for this concept, and it got out of hand. I got seven bottles that we're going to blind today, and I think that might be the most we've ever done, or at least not. It's tied for the most we I've ever done on this channel. So get ready for some fun 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 now today we are focusing on bardstown bourbon company 10. now this is one that has it's not it's been out for a couple months now but i just got a hold of it uh, here in virginia it became available coming in at 114.24 proof i enjoy bardstown discoveries i've liked them for the most part i've been buying them since i think three is the first one that i ever bought uh three four and then kind of kept going from there and i've gotten most of them uh since then but the series is kind of, you know, it's kind of gotten better. It's gotten worse. It's all over the place. So we're going to see how the 10 stacks up against these other special pours to find out for your hard-earned money. If you're going to buy a bottle for a special pour, what is that special pour going to be? Well, I would recommend all seven of these bottles. These are all seven good bottles. Uh, well, I haven't tried this one, so I don't know about this one. But the other, the other six over here, they're good bottles, so I'd recommend those. But which one is the best one? If you're only going to buy one for a special pour, for a special occasion type of whiskey, seven different options. Let's let's dive into them. So we got the uh, Barstown uh, Bourbon Company Discovery Series uh, 10. Now, before we get into the other bottles, if you end up enjoying this video, please smash that like button. I know it gets tiresome to hear from YouTube channels, but it really makes a difference if you subscribe to the channel, if you like the video, if you leave a comment, if you have some feedback. That really feeds the channel. It helps us in the algorithm to, to, to get in front of other people. Now, next up, we're going to put it up against the Discovery 9. Uh, Discovery 9 is a good bottle, 112.5 proof. It's it's a good bottle. I like the 9 quite a bit, and uh, I thought it was a good a good version of the Barstown Discovery series. And then we've got the Barstown 8. So most people, and not everybody, but most people think the 8 was amazing or really, really good better than the nine. That's most people. There are exceptions, of course, uh, but we'll see how the 10 goes. This is uh, coming in at 114.1 proof. I can't wait till Barstown can mostly just use their own juice, <laughs> that it's old enough to really kind of blend and create these interesting custom Barstown discoveries. Now we've got the three discoveries, so we want to see how these stack up against each other to see how the 10 does against its, its uh, what, older brothers, I guess would be the right way of saying it. Got some other bottles, some comparisons to figure out where you should spend your money, or at least where I would recommend you spend your money. We've got a Barrel Craft Spirits Dovetail coming in at 124.3 proof. It's a nice little dovetail there. It's a good bottle. We've got a Joseph Magnus Cigar Frickin' Blend coming in at 107 proof. Might be the lowest one of the night, but it's still a good pour. Now, uh, up next, we've got a Rye 3 Cigar Series. Uh, really nice bottle coming in at 120.12 proof. Uh, this is a triple cast finish. It's really, really, really good. I enjoy it. Last up tonight, uh, Four Gate Kelvin Collaboration 5. Now, this one's coming in at 117 proof finished in Anejo Dark Rum and uh, Australian Mariposa Sherry cask. This is what we're doing tonight. We're doing all seven of these. These are seven pretty high proofs. Um, yeah, ranging from 107, I think it's the lowest up to 125 ish. So, um, yeah, let's go. We got seven to get into. Let's do it. All right. So the reason I went with these particular bottles, one is that the Barstown Discovery series for the most part is findable. You can usually find it after it's released. Uh, you know, it's not like crazy hard to find. It can be a little bit, but it is expensive, $150, $160. It's, it can be up there a little bit. Um, the other ones, the Barrel Craft Spears Dovetails, those are pretty available, but again, they're kind of spendy. They're over a hundred bucks each. The Rye 3 uh, is just over a hundred bucks. The Cigar Blends, they're kind of probably one of the hardest to find on this list. Uh, still, you know, you'll, you'll pay anywhere from retail up to maybe $250 for those. And then the, uh, the Fourgate, uh, Kelvin Collabs are awesome. And, uh, but again, they're, you know, they come out fairly often and you can find them usually. So these are, none of these are super crazy, crazy hard to find, but none of them are cheap. These are all expensive bottles. So you gotta be, he's a special pour. So let's figure out where, where I recommend that you spend your hard earned dollars. Wow. That is, that smells so good. So I'm getting a really strong, like brown sugar and molasses note on this one. 
a little bit of caramel, some vanilla. It smells like a really thick caramel vanilla mixture with that brown sugar. Man, that smells good. High proof, good proof note on it. Definitely a high proof point. It's nice and fruity. There's some really nice brown sugar notes. A um, little bit of tingling uh, proof spice there, a little effervescence, not super strong though. It's drinkable, but it's got a really nice mouthfeel. That's really good. I like that one. That's That one's really impactful, good mouthfeel, good finish, nice sweet notes, but a good counterbalance of spice, a little bit of oak quality there. Nothing to complain about on that one. Ooh, this one's got a little bit of a barrel funk to it on the nose. Underneath that, there's this really, really nice, dark, dark, it's like, like a creamy cooked vanilla, almost like a vanilla cake. Again, it's got a little bit of a proof point there, but that mustiness, I don't love that mustiness. I don't know which bottle could be that one, but it is really complex on the nose though. This one's a little bit nuttier on the palate. It hits you and there's like this really strong baking spice quality. It's not overpowering, but it is pretty strong. And then some proof spice goes in. There's this underlying kind of like a nut quality to it, maybe an almond extract. It's not peanut shell, maybe like an almond butter kind of thing. But there is, there is this kind of buttery creaminess as well. Um, the proof is there and it, it it's a little punchy at first on the on the palate. It's a good it's a good sipping whiskey. I like it. This one smells like it's got a little bit more age on it. It's got a little bit of that kind of older barrel funk that I've, I talk about sometimes on older stuff. It's not super strong like it would be on a really old whiskey, but you're picking up, I'm picking up notes of it. It's got a nice, honestly, the nice, the nose is a really good balance of proof, this underlying vanilla cream, some white sugar, maybe a little bit of a white pepper as well. On the palate, it first hits you and there's this really strong burst of brown sugar and vanilla cream frosting. Then it goes to this really, really spicy note. Um, there's like this dried fruity quality to it, like a fruity, um, I don't know what kind of fruit it is, maybe a little bit of like a, an apricot, like a spicy apricot. The spice continues, the sweetness kind of comes back in after that, and after that it's more of just like a syrupy, sticky, um, like a syrup, like just a simple syrup kind of thing. Um, it sticks with you. It's got a really good mouth coat, really good finish. It's a strong, it's a strong, strong bourbon. This one's got it, that brown sugar again. I don't know what's going on tonight, but I'm getting all kinds of brown sugar notes and I'm enjoying them because I love me some brown sugar on bourbon. Brown sugar, a little bit of an oakiness on this one. Just kind of a mild oak. There's nothing super special. A little mild charriness as well. There's that brown sugar. It's kind of a medium spice uh, on the proof. And uh, overall, it's pretty nice. Wow, that's beautiful. That's super fruity. What is that? That's so good. It's just very different. On the nose, it had this kind of oaky and, and charry quality. But on the palate, it's just bursting with fruit. Compared to some of the others, this is really, really fruity. There's like a some apricot, some like burnt orange peel. Uh, it's got a nice mouthfeel, nice proof point. Um, the finish is a little short, but that fruit, the just bursting fruit quality is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm trying to go through them quick because I know once all these sips start getting to me, the uh, ranking is going to get impossible, so I'm trying to hurry. All right, this has a little bit more nuttiness to it than the others. So far, it's much more kind of peanut shell. Not like a Jim Beam peanut shell, but a little bit more peanut shell. Yeah, the predominant note on the nose is peanut shell. There's a little bit of oak, a little bit of char, a little bit of a chocolate, just a mild chocolate little bit. If you hit you up front, there's a ton of sweetness up front. It's like super creamy vanilla. Then there's a blast, a literal blast of spice. Then it kind of, but with that spice, there is kind of a little bit, I don't want to call it a peanut butter. What is that? It's like a vanilla cream with a little bit of almond extract in it. Maybe that's the best way to describe it. Great mouthfeel, really long, long finish. It's, it's a good quality bourbon or whiskey, 
I'll just tell you right now that seven a seven-way blind was a terrible idea already. All right, this has a little kind of a grassy funk to it. Just a mild one. After that, it's got a beautiful caramel, almost a little bit of butterscotch. A really, really nice older oak smell. It smells really good. I mean, other than that little bit of grassiness. This one's really, really spicy up front. I don't know if it's just baking spice or if there's a proofy spice quality to it. Kind of a little bit of a wine quality to it as well. Just kind of a... I don't know how to explain it, but it kind of tastes like a little bit of like a, a red wine or a dark wine kind of thing. Um, but it's like that really dark fruit there. Um, outside of that, it's got a good mouthfeel. It's got a good finish. I don't like wine tasty on my bourbons very much. So, um, yeah, I, it's interesting. It's good. I just don't know if I absolutely love that one. All right, last one. I got to number seven and I'm still standing, so that works. Call that a win. Oh, on the nose, this is really nice. It's got an apricot and plum fruit note. What is that? A little bit of a cereal grain, just very, very, very mild cereal grain. Little bit of a, like a simple syrup sweetness. It smells sweet, but it's not vanilla. It's not caramel. It's kind of hard to describe. I like it though, but it, that cereal grain isn't my favorite. Yeah, that has a strong cereal grain compared to the others. It's dark, it's rich, it's dense. There's a little bit of a, a, a spice note up front. A little bit of a honey sweetness. Goes into a little bit of like a... What's the best way to describe it? Yeah, cluster cereal, like those those uh, O's. Is it O's cereal? Something like that? I don't remember what it's called. But um, it, it's the O's with the little nuts like clustered inside them. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, when I was a kid, I loved them. But it kind of reminds me of that a little bit in the palate. A little honey. A little bit of a honeysuckle uh, kind of a floral note thing going on too. It's pretty good. I'm not going to complain too much. It's a good whiskey. None of these are bad. I mean, these are all pretty good whiskeys. But it's like picking apart like little pieces of really good whiskeys and saying this one's better because this one has this little, little minor flaw that I don't love. So anyway, I've gone through all seven of them. Now I'm going to go through and rank them. Wish me luck. This is going to be a, it's going to be an exercise. All right. This was a crazy hard competition. These were some really, really good bourbons tonight. Um, all of these I thought would fare well, but yeah, um, it, it's definitely starting to hit me. All right. Coming in seventh place tonight is this one. Sixth place is we'll use the, this podium for the six is this one. Fifth place is this one. Fourth place is this one. Third place is this one. Second place is this one. And first place is this one. All right, this is my ranking. Let's figure out what the bottles are. Coming in seventh place tonight right here is Barrelcraft Spirits. Coming in sixth place tonight right here is Discovery 9. Coming in fifth place tonight is this one. That's the Discovery 10. Ooh, that's not a great start for Discovery 10. Um, it's better than nine, but that's when it comes to special pours, if you're gonna be shelling out $150, 120, 150, $100, $200, whatever it is for a bottle, that's not a great place to be. Coming in fourth place right here is the Discovery 8. So the Discovery 8 actually fared better than the Discovery 10 tonight. Third place is Joseph Magnus. It was really, really good. The top three I thought were phenomenal. I thought the top three were really, really great bottles and I really, really enjoyed them. Uh, second place is the Rye 3 Cigar Series. And first place tonight is the Four Gate Kelvin Collaboration 5, which it's rum finished. I'm a sucker for rum finished, so it's not a shocker that that fared the best in the blind for me tonight. So hopefully this helped you figure out where you should spend your hard earned money if you're looking for a special pour of whiskey. And uh, I think it was a little enlightening for myself and hopefully it was for you as well. If you ended up enjoying this, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And until next time, find a bottle you love.